Hello and welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us today for this webinar. The webinar will begin shortly and we'll discuss advanced lighting solutions for retrofitting buildings. So my name is Joanna Costello from the International Solar Energy Society and I'll take you through the first few minutes of the webinar before I hand over to our moderator. So this webinar is organized uh, by the IEA SHC programs Solar Academy. Before we begin with the webinar presentations, I would like to inform you about what ISIS is and stands for. The International Solar Energy Society is a non-profit UN accredited membership NGO. The ISIS vision is to share 100% renewable energy, sorry, is to achieve 100% renewable energy for all used efficiently and wisely. We represent a diverse membership of academics, researchers, energy practitioners, consultants, students, businesses and advocates. ISIS works together with like-minded organizations from countries around the world to advance the renewable energy transformation. Uh, we'd like to encourage you to look into our membership opportunities uh, to continue your support for the 100% renewable energy movement. We understand that sometimes the time of the webinar may not suit people in many parts of the world. While well, we try to alternate webinar times to suit as many time zones as possible, it is not always the case. Therefore, we will post the recording of this webinar on the ISIS website and on the ISIS YouTube channel and on the IEA SHC Solar Academy's website and the IEA SHC Solar Academy's YouTube channel. So you can check out the recordings after this webinar there. You are welcome and encouraged to ask questions at any time throughout the webinar. To ask a question, select the questions pane on your screen and type in your question. Please specify who your question is directed to and the moderator will ask that to that panelist. Questions will be addressed after all the presentations in a Q&A session. A special thank you to the International Energy Agency Solar Heating and Cooling Program, the IEA SHC, Solar Academy for the organization of this webinar. I will pass over to the webinar moderator, Ricardo Enriquez Miranda, who is the Vice Chair of the IA SHC program. Ricardo will give you further information about the program and take you through the webinar agenda. Wishing you all an enjoyable webinar, and I now hand over to Ricardo. Thank you, Joanna. Uh, welcome everybody to this first uh, Solar Academy webinar dealing with uh, natural lighting. In uh, I'm trying to share my presentation. I don't know if everybody can see. Yes, we can see it. If you would go in the full, full screen mode. Okay. Perfect. So first of all. Solar heating and cooling is one of the very first programs of the uh, International Energy Agency. It uh, stands from uh, near 40 years and uh, it is uh, comprised of 21 member countries. We have a global reach through our sponsors such as uh, ARCRI, ICRI and ISIS. Uh, I must say thank you for the joining collaboration to this webinar, we can reach 47 additional countries. So I want to introduce you why. Let me, I don't know if I could, okay. This is a new activity from the Solar Heating and Cooling, so Solar Academy. Why? As I told you, uh, we deal with the 40 years of uh, information and knowledge about R&D about solar thermal applied to buildings and industry. So we want to share and this is valuable knowledge to share with the rest of the world. How can you participate? Well, like attending like webinars like this will be held quarterly and uh, in collaboration with ISIS. We have uh, also producing videos highlighting our work and other sort of thermal issues. 
you can see our first video package. It's uh, 11 videos. Uh, taken from presentations from Qatar's Green Expo, held in November last year in Doha, Qatar. And the speakers discussed uh, current projects from IASHC in supporting solar thermal in the Middle East and North Africa region. We also organized national days, country specific events held in conjunction with the solar heating and cooling meetings, so you can exchange information between national experts and solar heating and cooling worldwide experts. On-site training provided by solar heating and cooling experts by request of uh, solar heating and cooling member countries. All this uh, information, okay, you can find for sure in a website IAHCC.org uh, or Twitter, LinkedIn, or for sure uh, joining us in Abu Dhabi and the Solar Heating and Cooling uh, 2017. We're together, joined together with Solar Work Congress 2017. So that was uh, what I want to show you about. Uh, this and Joanna now right now I think I'm not sharing my uh, my screen. Am I right? Yes, that's correct. We can go straight to the first presentation. Okay, so then we move to the first uh, speaker. Uh, I have the pleasure the pleasure to uh, introduce John De Boer. Jan de Boer is an uh, operating agent of uh, IEA HAC Task 50, named Advanced Lighting Solutions for Retrofitting Buildings. Jan is uh, an excellent person, first of all, I know him personally, and uh, he uh, holds a PhD in building uh, physics. He has uh, work at the Fraunhofer Institute for Building Physics as a group manager and uh, after a master of business administration uh, he is a member and coordinator of several standardization commissions and working groups on energy efficiency and lighting at the world widely. So uh, the topic he will introduce uh, the integrative approach to allocate uh, different potential potentials in lighting retrofits. So, uh, I will give you about uh, 10 minutes, John, uh, and after that we can go for a quick uh, round of uh, questions and I will introduce the uh, next speaker. So, John, the audience is yours. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Joanna and uh, Ricardo, for the kind introduction. Um, yes, it's a pleasure now to introduce to you this IEA Task uh, 50, Advanced Lighting Solutions for Retrofitting Buildings, an international research collaboration uh, which altogether lasted for three and a half years, and uh, we finished this activity last uh, summer, so summer 2016. Uh, first of all, to get uh, Big picture on lighting and energy uh, demand uh, worldwide. We know that we are at around 90% of worldwide electricity consumption for lighting purposes. As you can tell from this uh, diagram, uh, the lighting demand still increases uh, due to the still growing economies we're seeing worldwide, but also to uh, some rebound effects we are seeing. If we are uh, looking into energy savings in the lighting field, uh, we of course have to look at uh, the lighting retrofit uh, sector as we see only, especially in the developed countries, a small volume of uh, new building construction. So it's obvious to uh, look into what is already out there, has been installed uh, years ago and uh, some estimations from the German lighting industry uh, come up to 75% of appliances being outdated, uh, meaning being older than uh, 25 years. Uh, with, uh, when we are looking into the market, we are seeing different uh, retrofit rates. Uh, on average, uh, we estimate at around 3%. Uh, 
Um, that of course depends whether you're in the shop retail sector where retrofits are going with fashion a little faster. Uh, on the other hand, we are having uh, some very old appliances uh, still uh, in the buildings and office buildings or also manufacturing uh, halls. Uh, looking at it from the economic side, we know that uh, we have around uh, 30 to 50 percent turnover of uh, as well lighting as the uh, well as facade industry. Uh, in the field of lighting retrofits and uh, if we are tackling this uh, topic uh, we of course have to target different audiences. Uh, in the end it's always the building owner or investor which you're seeing here in the middle who is making the decision uh, whether to start a retrofit of the lighting installation to start it and how to start it uh, but nevertheless we are having as you're seeing on the left hand side uh, authorities or NGOs uh, working on this process, um, then we are having the consultants and designers and uh, of course industry with new products and new uh, technologies being introduced to the market uh, working in this uh, whole process. Um, so that uh, basically then took us to set up this structure addressing different target groups with a work program. And uh, the task structure you're seeing here, the objective was to accelerate retrofitting of daylighting and electric lighting solutions in the non-domestic sector. So we're not uh, have been focusing on uh, dwellings, uh, the, the domestic sector, using cost-effective best practice approaches. Um, so things which we think uh, in the end will actually work. Uh, we have set up uh, this uh, whole program in four so-called subtasks. The first one is dealing with market and policies. Uh, the second one was on daylighting and electric lighting solutions, looking rather on the, the technology side. Uh, Martina Knob will later on give a presentation um, in this area. Uh, subtask C was dealing with uh, design tools and methods. Um, and subtask D was uh, then uh, in the end uh, delivering evidence that things, uh, concepts developed actually work uh, by uh, doing case study work. Also you're seeing uh, some cross-section activity, a joint working group, a lighting retrofit advisor, it's a toolbox of different uh, components uh, which Simon Wessner will give a talk on later uh, this afternoon. Uh, so the whole uh, group which has been working on this project uh, you're seeing here, altogether 18 universities, institutes and companies have been involved uh, coming from 14 countries. So uh, I would like to look now into uh, some specific issues, first of all market and policies um, to understand and model the financial and energy impact associated to retrofitting, daylighting as well as electric lighting solutions of buildings. And here that's of course the uh, often biggest question, efficiency and economics. Um, we can identify here low hanging fruits as we have called it, so things where you get a very uh, yeah, good efficiency at a low price. And uh, we have performed a detailed analysis. Um, you're seeing here for an open space office uh, the comparison of uh, keeping a lighting installation as it is. We assumed here a T8 uh, fluorescent tube installation. You're seeing it here on the uh, black line and then comparing to that with of course an initial invest, changing that against LED uh, solutions and uh, you benefit then uh, putting in uh, those solid state lighting solutions of course uh, from uh, smaller operation costs, lower energy and also lower maintenance uh, costs and uh, then you are coming of course to a uh, intersection in this case of these two um, lines and uh, that basically delivers us a payback time. So for in this case open space offices uh, we are in uh, the domain of five to six years uh, payback time replacing an existing installation against a, a solid uh, state lighting solution with in this case also light management. We have done lots of parametric uh, variations uh, change for instance uh, influence of the existing uh, installed power. So if you're having a very inefficient installation it will pay off of course even earlier. Uh, we also looked at the electricity cost as they of course vary depending on uh, the country uh, you're uh, having your building in and uh, then we also presented these graphs, uh, these uh, data in different ways. So here you're seeing a representation 
a payback time on the y-axis as a function of uh, on the x-axis the existing installed power. So uh, depending here in this case from uh, the electricity cost. So uh, lots of data generated here which uh, can give uh, fast and uh, quick in indications on how uh, economies and uh, economics and uh, energy efficiency relate. Uh, I have shown this here to you for uh, an open space office. We have generated similar data for um, standard offices, for education and manufacturing halls, and also for the wholesale retail um, sector. Uh, you're seeing here it's sort of an aggregated compilation uh, on where we are at. For instance, wholesale and retail, you normally get uh, end up at payback times of five years. If you're going into halls without roof lights, it's even lower than that at around uh, one to two and a half years. Um, so uh, things can pay off pretty, pretty fast. Another issue uh, which we uh, identified looking into the financial um, aspects of lighting retrofit is that uh, we are seeing a paradigm change that people not longer have to own their lighting installation but that they can uh, introduce newer uh, financial models uh, like leasing or um, energy contracting, uh, getting uh, energy saving performance contracts into the process. Um, and uh, benefiting here from expertise certain companies have uh, and all together the company which is giving the installation to you and uh, you as a, a customer both benefit from uh, lower energy prices and lower uh, maintenance prices. So new aspect coming in here. Uh, we also address the issue looking rather at uh, authorities, what can they do uh, in their codes and regulations. Uh, we made an assessment of existing codes, uh, comparisons and uh, recommendations. Uh, we here, for instance, generated lists taking old luminaires out of operation. Uh, you can see if you just follow some standard uh, fixtures, you know compact uh, fluorescent based downlights. They are having efficiencies at around 30 to 40 lumens per watt if you are replacing them with state of the art. Uh, uh, LED uh, solid state lighting components, you're going up to 120, uh, 110 lumen per watt. So it's an efficiency boost of a factor of three around here. So that's on the component base. We looked at uh, things. We also made uh, recommendations for the systematic uh, approach of uh, giving uh, regulations for uh, whole lighting uh, systems, including the daylighting aspect from the facade as well as the electric lighting and connecting both uh, by the light management. So this is from the German uh, standards and uh, the German uh, uh, energy saving regulation and we made recommendations how these uh, ca uh, methods can be further developed in the future. We as well looked uh, at how uh, these electric and daylighting aspects are uh, tackled on the sustainability label level. Uh, there are LEED, BREEAM, uh, in Germany GGNB or BNB systems around. Uh, so you find in the uh, reports we generated a uh, comparison of these uh, different um, approaches. We all together see here that uh, especially in the sustainability labels, uh, daylighting uh, is uh, pushed quite well. Uh, we see in other standards that's not the case uh, that much, but here uh, daylighting uh, has been addressed in a quite well way. Uh, so for instance, if you're looking at uh, daylight workplaces uh, for continually used spaces, you're finding the comparison of um, the requirements and uh, the evidence how you show that things are uh, working actually presented here. Um, those are bigger lists which have been generated and uh, these findings have for this uh, field of market and policies uh, been included in three reports which can be downloaded from the Task 50 website. Um, this is just one uh, quick slide on the activity we had on the technology side. Uh, Martina is going to talk about these altogether 38 technologies investigated here later on, so i be quite quick on this. Um, with respect to method and tools, uh, we made 
overviews, assessments of tools which are out there and in some parts develop some new uh, tool components as well. Um, so one uh, issue which had been uh, done at the beginning of the task was a big survey trying to understand uh, what tools uh, designers use and how designers and practitioners actually approach this whole um, retrofit uh, process. Uh, and uh, for instance, if you're looking here at the upper left um, chart, um, the main retrofit strategies people employ is uh, first of all they put in occupancy sensors, then they go into the luminaire technology, make modifications there. Uh, they also do, if we're going a little further down here, into daylight dimming controls, things like that. So we get a pretty good impression on what is actually happening on the market. Uh, also, we did uh, evaluations on what they prefer, what aspects are relevant for choosing design tools and also the process of uh, tackling uh, lighting retrofits. Quite interesting that people actually, um, designers uh, do it mostly themselves and uh, uh, there are some advice they're getting from uh, companies, uh, specialized uh, lighting companies. Uh, or uh, even uh, the uh, lighting manufacturers which uh, support them in this issue. So lots of information, uh, 20 questioners, uh, questions posed to all, altogether all over 1,000 uh, participants in this survey. So I think it's a quite a good, valid source of information. Uh, we did comparisons uh, here on the quality of uh, the assessment tools. We found that electric lighting uh, simulations work quite stable and confident for the daylighting uh, field. We still see that especially if it's coming down to complex fenestration systems, so if you're talking about blind uh, systems, special uh, Venetian blind solutions or light directing uh, solutions in the facade, the calculation accuracy, as you can uh, tell down here, uh, is still uh, needs still some further investigations. Uh, so we are seeing here some uh, quite uh, significant variations. Uh, so that the new technology of modeling things, uh, there's lots uh, still still work to do in this field. Uh, we also worked uh, on uh, speeding up uh, calculation uh, pro processes. Um, prior to uh, the activity we started, uh, it took uh, basically hours to evaluate annual performance of uh, the daylight impact on lighting energy. Uh, there are new methods uh, called uh, three-phase or five-phase method out there which speed up uh, the calculation tremendously that we now can run these annual simulations on um, mobile devices on less than five seconds for an annual run. Uh, I think Simon will talk a little about that later on as well. Uh, you find uh, all these uh, results from uh, this uh, activity on method on tools also documented in uh, four uh, reports. And then uh, looking at uh, the field of case studies, um, we wanted to see how these uh, concepts actually of lighting retrofits work in uh, practice. Uh, we looked at all together 24 case studies. Uh, you see that we are on the southern hemisphere with two projects. Uh, we are out in uh, the Far East in Japan and in uh, China and uh, of course depending a little on the number of participants, the majority came from uh, Europe. Or we have uh, the majority of the projects in uh, Europe. Uh, as you can tell uh, from the lower uh, right corner, we looked at offices, educational, industry, shop, hospitals, and sports uh, facilities. Um, altogether, uh, as I said, uh, 24 different buildings. So you're seeing it in overview over here. We developed a new assessment and monitoring protocol, not only looking at the energy use, but also looking at the retrofit costs looking at the photometries in the spaces and also doing a user assessment as we, of course, uh, have to put the user first. People have to accept these spaces. Uh, it cannot be um, driven by energy and costs only. So uh, that's a quite integrative uh, aspect and monitoring protocol we used. Uh, we then uh, have uh, compiled this information which has been assessed uh, into a standard format. Uh, you're seeing some screenshots here. This is the engine construction hall of a company in uh, Baden-Württemberg. Um, so Simon will show, how, show you later on how to assess this information in the Slicing Retrofit Advisor. So it's a standard, it's nothing spe spectacular, not a really spectacular building, just a standard conventional building 
but I think that makes uh, 90 out of 100 uh, percent of the cases uh, we, are, we are looking in daily work at. And uh, we provide information, for instance, here on the daylighting side, uh, the roof has been changed, uh, daylight uh, roof, roof light monitors have been introduced. Uh, to this uh, formerly totally closed uh, manufacturing hall. Uh, we changed here the uh, artificial electric lighting from T8 fluorescent uh, tubes to LED. Um, and uh, we did then a lighting environment uh, analysis, in this case uh, using uh, luminance uh, camera systems made assessments on the daylight factors, on the uniformity of uh, light uh, distribution, things like that. And then in the end looked at uh, the energy aspects and you can see here that uh, we came down quite significantly before retrofit at around uh, 27 kilowatt hours per square meter and here it went down uh, after retrofit to uh, 6 uh, kilowatt hours per square meter in year. That's on the one hand due to the high, much higher efficiency of uh, the electric lighting system, but also due to the introduction of uh, the roof light system in combination with the daylight dependent dimming system. So uh, quite a big uh, step which could be shown here. Uh, you also then get uh, an overall conclusions uh, presented to these case studies, to each of these case studies um, summarizing uh, the findings. So altogether, uh, we found over 24, uh, all, all 24 projects uh, before retrofit in average uh, demand of 27 kilowatt hours per square meter in year, and that went down to uh, 14 kilowatt hours per square meter in a year. So we lowered things by 50 percent and showed that uh, these concepts basically work. So we also uh, found a winner, and uh, the winner was a project from Luxembourg, no, sorry, from Belgium. Uh, where actually a halogen uh, installation in the lobby uh, could be uh, lowered from 86 kilowatt hours per square meter and year to 16 kilowatt hours per square meter and year. You see that it uh, really um, ha holds uh, huge potentials um, depending on, on uh, from which installation you are starting. Also, this has been documented in uh, several reports. Simon will talk a little later on the lighting retrofit advisor. As I said, it integrates the findings we had from the different subtasks. Uh, so we have put all that into one uh, toolbox. Uh, it offers basically two uh, passes, two ways to work with it. It's an advisor path, so you're specifying basically who you are, whether you're an owner, investor, industry seller, or installer, and then the program system gives you some tailored information and then we have something which we call component path where uh, you have different information components. You among others find all the case studies I just mentioned in this tool. Uh, you find the report, the survey I talked about, the technologies uh, Martin is going to talk about and then you have, so have co uh, calculation components um, which help you also to directly on site to identify potentials and to allocate um, then later on these potentials. So uh, basically coming uh, now slowly to an end, uh, we have all this information online, altogether 12 technical reports, uh, one source book. Uh, we have the software package available. You can access it uh, via the web or you can get it on uh, Google Play Store, so it's Android based as well. It's around 190 uh, megabytes of information. Uh, we have some scientific uh, publications, uh, 11 journal articles, uh, articles, 49 conference contributions, and uh, you find all of this on uh, this Task 50 website. Uh, some additional information briefly for uh, participants from Germany. We have a small booklet uh, just recently published, uh, summing up uh, some of these results I uh, published, sorry, only for the moment, available in uh, German, available via our website, and uh, just a brief outlook, uh, and also there yeah, are thanks to the IEA SHC program, lighting has uh, had a home here since uh, decades. Um, First, it started with these daylighting projects, Task 21, 31. We had this uh, now finished uh, Task 50 on lighting retrofits, and we are currently uh, defining a new task proposal, which is dealing integrated um, on the topic of integrating solutions for daylight and electric lighting uh, systems. So that is what is currently being set up. So uh, if anybody is interested in details on this, uh, you're welcome to 
to ask on that, as, of course, as well. So that's it for me. Thank you, uh, Ricardo and Joanna. Thank you, John, for such an interesting uh, presentation. And I think we have uh, time for some uh, questions. So I can see here in the panel there are some questions. One question coming from uh, Boulder, Colorado, from Mike and Michael Holtz. Uh, dealing with the lighting economics, I can read you. He was uh, for sure the operating agent for IAEA SEC task 8, 12, and 21. And he's interested about the application in existing commercial buildings and the non-energy related benefits such as well-being, productivity and health. So uh, he says that with advanced electric lighting it's difficult, uh, if not impossible in most locations, to make an energy economics case for the lighting. Say only uh, including the non-related benefits of daylight uh, that a return of investment can be achieved. So, can you say something about this, John? Yes, of, of, of course. I mean, uh, for electric lighting, it's, it's quite simple to uh, calculate to to set up any uh, economic uh, cases, um, since we have. Some, some quite stable uh, boundary conditions um, and uh, for um, the, the daylighting side if we're going into facade technology uh, it's of course uh, much more expensive it's, it's harder to measure what the actual impact uh, will be so uh, to my opinion if you're changing uh, the facade you're doing it often definitely out of uh, the lighting uh, aspect but you're also including thermal aspects uh, to it uh, you are doing a retrofit because the uh, uh, whole facade is not um, in a good shape any longer so uh, applying hard economic uh, criteria to daylighting is, uh, is, 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 is difficult uh, especially if we are uh, looking at um, yeah, the uh, generally lower demands or consumptions we're seeing in lighting uh, as uh, it's relatively going down with uh, with, with, with the LED um, uh, technology. So um, I, I hope that I, that I got uh, Michael's uh, intention of this question and then try to and, and uh, hope, hope that I answered it somewhat. Okay, one one more one more question uh, for you, Jan. Uh, okay, some some of the participants are interested in if you have uh, done studies beyond buildings. Yeah, they are thinking about uh, lighting on large ships. Do you have uh, knowledge about uh, studies on large ships? Uh, Ricardo, sorry, I didn't didn't get the question acoustically on on large large ships. It's, uh, boats. Ships? Oh, on on boats.
it doesn't have a direct uh, relation to codes or regulations. Uh, so we, we give some recommendations in this tool. So some of the slides I presented uh, are also contained in the in the lighting retrofit advisor, and uh, the the strategies uh, here for for getting lighting retrofits uh, better into the regulation process could be actually to have a regulation which tells that uh, you have to take very old installations out of order or that you introduce for uh, reinstalling minimum uh, criteria that you say you have to have at least 100 lumen per watt uh, uh, luminar output uh, ratio something like that uh, so uh, there are ideas uh, which we have in the reports and in the lighting retrofit advisor which you can find there so I, I hope that answers the question okay for sure John uh, well, I we have some more questions, but I want to move to the next speaker. And if we at the end of the webinar we have some time, maybe we can recover some some of them. So uh, thank you, Jan, and I want to introduce you now uh, to uh, Martin Noob of the Technical University of Berlin. She is uh, Saptas B leader in the, under the topic of daylighting and electric lining solutions that I think is probably one of the most interesting parts of, of, of the task. For sure all the parts of the task are interesting but these are really close to the solutions. Uh, Martin is a lecturer at the Technische Universität of uh, Berlin. Uh, she holds a PhD uh, in architecture from the Delft uh, University of Technology. And, uh, okay, I don't want to steal more time to her and just say thank you and try to fix to about uh, 20 minutes of presentation. Okay. Go out. Thank you, Ricardo. Good afternoon, uh, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Martina Knop, as was already said uh, just before. I was the subtask leader of uh, one of the activities that uh, Jan de Boer just showed. Um, I was not doing that alone, that's, uh, that's obvious, so there were about 17 task participants involved in my uh, subtask uh, dealing with daylighting and electric lighting retrofit solutions and as the subtask leader I will present the main results uh, of their work uh, today. If we look at, oh, sorry, so if, I, if I look at the, uh, the aim that we had uh, in the beginning the starting point was uh, the fact that simple retrofits are widely accepted and if I talk about simple retrofits uh, you can think about replacing a lamp or adding a Venetian blind at the indoor uh, side of your window. Well these are widely accepted, they're cost effective um, but at the same time we know that state-of-the-art approaches both in daylighting and electric lighting can offer a uh, higher reduction of energy consumption for electric lighting maybe improve lighting quality most of the time with a for more uh, higher cost but in the end the quality of the lighting will be, uh, be, be better in the in the building. So our aim was uh, to look at these uh, state-of-the-art uh, approaches beyond um, simple, simple retrofits uh, and see if we can build up some material, collect information to support the decision process to include these state-of-the-art state approaches. Just to give you an overview of the variety that we dealt with, um, I have some uh, examples here that are in fact building retrofits but that affect the, um, the lighting conditions in the room. As you can see on the right, uh, left hand side of the slides we have changes in reflectances that of course will affect the lighting conditions, the brighter the, wind, uh, the walls uh, and the ceilings. Uh, the more light will be uh, reflected in the room and the higher the light levels might be. In the middle of the uh, slide you see an example of that as a, a pre and a post uh, situation. So the upper, build, uh, upper picture is uh, the situation before retrofit uh, and renovation and the lower one you see that there's quite a, quite a difference in the lighting conditions as well. And a more labor extensive way of retrofitting um, that affects the lighting conditions is of course if we, uh, if we do something to the facade as you can see on the right hand side of this uh, pictures. If we really focus on the lighting uh, retrofits, um, I have here some example for electric lighting retrofits. The most simple one is the one that you see on the left hand uh, corner, upper upper one 
we use a retrofit LED uh, instead of a fluorescent lamp. But you can think of uh, changing a ballast, uh, changing complete luminaires, as you can see on the right hand side in the upper corner, or adding occupancy sensing, um, or a specific developed lighting con uh, lighting solution that really focuses on task illuminance where you where you need it. These are various uh, lighting electric lighting retrofits, and of course you can imagine that there are way more than that. If we look at the daylighting solutions, I have a few examples here as well. We have on the left side uh, simple blinds, but you can also think of removing the, uh, the, um, the window pane and adding a window element with redirecting blinds, as you can see in the middle part, or adding movable light shelves to the outer part. Uh, doing something to the roof, adding, for example, as you can see in the right upper corner, um, skylights, or include diffusing materials, as you see in the right uh, lower part, um, that um, redirect the sunlight uh, into a room. So these are solutions that we looked at, um, and as you can see from these three different slides, we have a high variety uh, that we needed to, um, well, to organize uh, a bit. So what we did is, we looked at a way to, to talk about these uh, solutions in two different ways. Um, one was the intervention type, as you can see on this slide. Um, so either you look at a very simple retrofit uh, by upgrading or uh, of an existing situation. Uh, somewhat more uh, labor intensive is the uh, use of new components in an existing situation where you can think of changing a luminaire with a uh, newer luminaire or changing a fluorescent luminaire with an LED luminaire, but you will still leave the ceiling the way it is. And then you can have the most labor extensive uh, situation where you look at the redesign of the lighting, uh, lighting installation. So in this way, we could organize uh, a bit the, uh, the retrofit solutions uh, and at the same time also get an impression already for the, uh, for the amount of money that you had to uh, take in your hands to do to, to the retrofit. On the other hand, we of course have the, uh, the differences in lighting. Um, lighting situations, so we have daylighting solutions. As you see in the upper part, we have a laser cut panel. Um, in the second row, there is a, a sun protection uh, film on the, on the window, which is a kind of a daylight control system. And then the two electric lighting solutions, either luminaires or uh, lighting responsive controls. So here, daylighting responsive controls in the fourth row or an occupancy sensor. To add that, it's using a new component in an existing situation, but with a different lighting retrofit. And in the lower row, you see again uh, the building, uh, and in this case, it's a change of partition height. So we need we we what we brought in into this building is lower partitions to have more uh, daylight contribution into the uh, into the building. So this way, we try to organize the uh, retrofits, and then of course to uh, to judge them. And in order to judge them, um, we already said that um, it's very, we have a high variety, so we have daylighting solutions and electric lighting solutions, and both uh, give already a, a large number of uh, different light, lighting retrofit possibilities. Well, in order to be able to compare these with each other, um, which is not that easy, we try to look at the reasons to, um, to retrofit. So in order to... Um, to judge the performance of lighting retrofit solutions to make a selection in the end in your project. We looked at these reasons to retrofit and if we look at that, it's most of the time to save energy, um, either energy for the electric lighting or energy for um, cooling, for example. So that's the reason why we looked into energy efficiency and thermal aspects. And the other thing is to reduce costs that's why we looked at running an initial cost of the products. And um, a third reason to retrofit might be lighting quality. So we looked at lighting quality aspects as well. So to get a holistic evaluation of the products, we looked at all these pr uh, performance criteria, specifically for daylighting and electric lighting solutions. And we included them in, these ca in this catalog of criteria, as you can see here on the left-hand side of the, the slide. 
this was uh, this was done for all the uh, the criteria um, as I just uh, showed, but uh, to give you an impression how that works. Um, if you think about energy efficiency, it's not so easy to have the same quality criteria in detail for each product. So we have different quality criteria for daylighting when it comes to energy efficiency, as you can see on the slide, and also other uh, quality criteria, details quality criteria for energy efficiency when it comes to electric lighting. But on a higher level, we can compare the energy efficiency potential of both uh, solutions. So we did that for actually all um, main topics, energy efficiency, lighting quality, thermal aspects, and cost. And we brought that together in this technical report. So if you want to have a look at that, because I cannot do that in this, uh, this presentation, it's too much detail. I hope you cannot read the details uh, on, the, on the right side of this slide as well, because this is all in the, uh, in the document. You can download it, this from the Task 50 uh, website. So the document is there. Uh, free available. You can read all the background information on the choice, uh, choice of quality criteria as well as the um, actual values that we put to that. Uh, so you can see just here an uh, in, uh, overview of how that could look like. These are the quality criteria or part of the quality criteria for daylight retrofit solutions. What you could see in the middle, maybe if you have good eyes, is here this gray part. Um, the gray part is the baseline situation. So we compared, in the end, 38 uh, retrofit solutions with a baseline. Um, and this baseline looked like uh, this. Well, it's, it's a room. We didn't look at a room evaluation, but we looked at the technologies. And the most important things are then the technologies, as you can see here. So we compared our state-of-the-art retrofit technologies when it comes to daylight with a clear double-pane window with simple movable blinds to make sure that the people could look at during the day, get as much daylight into the, uh, into the room as possible, but be uh, protected from glare when sunlight is available and have some privacy at night. So that was the daylight baseline. And then from a literature review, we got the baseline uh, for electric lighting, which was, a, for example, for an office building, a T8 installation with the quality criteria, as you can see right here. Uh, and we compared all our technologies uh, with, these, uh, with, these, with this uh, specific baseline. Well, to show the quality, we uh, wanted to um, we want to do that in a specific way to make a very quick evaluation possible. So what we did is we made for every technology a, a small icon. As you see on this slide, we have here four, two for daylight, two for electric lighting. The small um, line in the middle is the baseline. And if you look at the three bars on the every technology, you see the first bar is for energy efficiency. The blue bar is for lighting quality and the red bar is for thermal aspects. So if we look at the first technology, which is a laser cut panel, um, this is a technology that can be used to redirect sunlight into a room. It will um, increase energy efficiency, as you can see from the, from the bar. It's beyond the baseline. In comparison to the baseline, you will save electric light, uh, energy for electric lighting. Um, the lighting quality in the room will increase a bit. There are a lot of uh, aspects that inf impact this lighting quality, but one of the things that in increases here is the lighting levels deeper into the room. The walls will get brighter, and with this, the lighting quality will increase. When we look at the thermal aspects, the laser cut panel does not, perf not perform as well as the baseline situation with the clear window. Uh, and Venetian blinds where the sun comes uh, comes up or the sun, the sun comes at the, uh, at the facade uh, because this system lets through the sunlight um, and might require higher cooling needs. So we did that for all 38, uh, uh, all 38 products and um, collected this information in two, um, two products. So to say, so we have a technology a viewer in the lighting retrofit advisor, as you can see on the right side of this slide, uh, where you can click on the icons as you uh, see here, and you can get all the details and information. Um, but I'm pretty sure that uh, Simon will uh, will address that briefly in his presentation as well. And if not, he will you will have access to that information 
for the uh, te technology viewer in the lighting retrofit advisor, which is available online as well. And then we um, collected all the information in the source book. You see a picture uh, here on the slide. Um, I'll show you just one slide um, how that looks like, because I can go through the whole document uh, this afternoon. This is the front side on the left side of this slide. And on the right side, you see how uh, the technologies are presented in the um, in the document. You'll have a very short summary uh, in the uh, in the beginning of the uh, page. You'll have a icon or a, a, a sketch of the technology uh, and the highlights and lowlights um, on the um, on the side of the page. And you have the description with some references and pictures. Uh, in the middle of the page. So that's what we did for every technology. And then again, we did the whole evaluation with the catalog of criteria for all the uh, products. And that leads to, that does lead to this, uh, this overview. Uh, Jan showed it already briefly. Um, so you have for every technology that we uh, looked into a quality um, performance evaluation um, in energy efficiency and lighting quality and for the daylighting products also on the thermal aspects, you will be able to make a short or a very fairly uh, fast decision what uh, technology will fit your purposes uh, best. I have to admit at this, uh, at this position that we did the review in 2015, we did the documentation in 2016, and of course, we get the question, what happens uh, with this review? Does it change because of the, for example, developments when it comes to the LED? And I have to say that when it comes to the daylighting technologies, um, we don't expect any changes in, uh, in cost that much. We don't expect any performance changes uh, in so much detail that will change the evaluation here. But there will be a change in the LED, so the LED will be uh, more cost uh, uh, will have lower cost and more energy uh, will be more energy efficient. So all the LED products that are already included in this uh, review and have have a high energy efficiency and maybe somewhat uh, moderate uh, cost, they will have a higher energy efficient even more. So it will be uh, very clear from the view view that um, this will be the economic retrofit solution in the end anyway. So the review was done in 2015 uh, and will change a bit, but it will does, does not uh, significantly, it will, does, it will not significantly change the conclusions of the, uh, the report. Just to give you an overview, I know that's a lot of text on one side, uh, on one slide, uh, but I want you to have an overview of what we found in this uh, technology review. We did the review of uh, 38 uh, products uh, with a high variation between daylighting and electric lighting solutions, both uh, looking at solutions that could be used uh, as an easy retrofit up to a retrofit for a complete redesign. Uh, and the conclusions are, in fact, um, so the question just, just now uh, from, um, from Michael is not uh, yeah, it was in the same direction. Uh, the conclusions up till now are that the economic retrofits uh, are mostly in the in the direction of uh, electric lighting, so LED solutions, as you can see here on the slide. The thing is that uh, there are way more economic economical retrofit solutions than just replacing a lamp or adding a Venetian blind to uh, to the window. So we have here a small list, uh, including, for example, task ambient lighting concept or time scheduling using using wireless controls uh, or personal controls uh, in in specific situations are economic retrofits as well. And we hope that this document will help to promote these uh, solutions. If we look at lighting quality increase, we see that the electrical lighting solutions often don't really change the um, lighting quality. Either they already have a good quality um, and uh, or they, um, they the lighting solution is changed because they have bad lighting quality. But in fact, if you, you change a lighting solution, electric lighting solution, most of the time do it for economical uh, purposes. If you want to do something with the lighting quality, um, you can do that if you use daylight retrofits. Um, so the quality of the lighting will become, in most of the cases, cases better, uh, or do a complete redesign of the lighting in installation, the electric lighting installation or lighting controls. 
So if, it, if it's about economics, there are simple solutions that you can use. If you want to do uh, something with the quality of your light in, in the room, you, do to do, you need to do a redesign of electric lighting uh, solution with controls or introduce uh, daylight retrofits. To conclude this presentation, if I look at the work that we did in the in the years uh, of IEA Task 15, uh, the work, the material that we provided allows an evaluation of uh, daylighting systems as well as electric lighting solutions. Uh, but I have to say at the same time, it's on product families only, as you can see on this slide. Uh, we don't talk about solutions in, in a specific application. Uh, so we look at a high-level uh, evaluation from a technology in comparison to the baseline uh, that we uh, defined in this uh, in this project, but it will give you a fairly fast impression whether a solution or a techn a technology, a retrofit technology, fits your purposes. And then if you have two or three solutions that fit you well, you could use them and see, um, or you could look at them in more detail and see what of the three, which of the three uh, fits your purposes uh, the best. So it makes the, the tools that we provide make it possible to make a first uh, decision, but not a final decision. And what we hope, of course, is that um, we promote uh, with this uh, documentation other lighting retrofits beyond the uh, simple, um, well, well um, established uh, light and retrofits and we hope that the use of daylight uh, solutions will be uh, further promoted through this uh, material. And with this I would like to conclude my presentation and I thank you all for your attention. Hey, thank you Martin. Um, I think we have some time for uh, questions. Uh, one uh, attendant uh, is uh, worried about uh, the influence on the heat load for uh, cooling down buildings in countries like uh, India with hot uh, climates. Can you say something about the trade-off uh, between natural lightning and cooling load? Well, the climate thing is, of course, always a uh, a uh, an issue. So, what we um, what we did in this presentation or this uh, task is we looked at the product as such. So, we say if there if there is an impact on the thermal um, or on the cooling load, you will see that in the thermal aspect. So, it will um, it will be worse than the uh, baseline situation. Um, of course, this is more critical for, for countries where um, where, we, where you don't want to have the uh, the additional solar gain in the, in the summertime or winter time. Um, so uh, that's what I what I wanted to say. This is um, we we look at a technology level, not in the application. Although we have made comments in the uh, in the source book where where it's clear that some products don't fit well in certain climates. I hope that helps. So it gives you an impression, the thermal aspects give you an impression whether it's good to be used in hotter climates or not, um, but that's about it. So that's that's the level that we looked at it. Okay, thank you. And other question uh, about the, the evaluation of the quality of the light. Yeah. Uh, have you used simulation data or some uh, tabulated data from uh, an standard? You mean from the standard? Well, what we have in the quality uh, catalog of criteria is all requests that you have from standards, um, at least in Europe and in Brazil and China, because these were the countries that were involved in the in the project. So we looked at quality criteria coming from the standards. Um, but I'm not sure if that's the question. Okay, I, I, you, it's, yeah. it's a it's a good answer as far as it, because the question was not very very detailed. Uh, one more question for you uh, about this: when you retrofit uh, retrofit a building, you need to decide the baseline to yeah. uh, this case. So how did you do? 
Okay, we had um, we had a literature review activity together with the subtask D who looked into field studies. So we look there is a report available on the internet um, from subtask D where there is an, a review of what, what lighting is available um, on the world in normal buildings. Um, so what you find there is um, is typical lighting solutions um, for offices and uh, educational buildings, industry halls, and so on. And that's uh, that's what we looked at, and that's what we uh, drew off uh, throughout uh, our baseline. Okay, thank you, Martin. Uh, there are more questions, but uh, I prefer to move to the next uh, speaker. So thank you, Martin. And if, uh, as in the young case, if there are more questions, probably at the end of the webinar, we can attend that. Let me introduce you now to Simon Bessner. He's uh, dealing, leading the uh, Lighting Retrofit Advisor. He was one of the main products of past uh, 50, sorry. And uh, of the solar heating and cooling, he is uh, working at the Fraunhofer Institute of Building Physics in Stuttgart, and has a wide experience in developing and implementing different software concepts. Uh, he's also a contributor in various uh, several IEA projects, such as uh, Task 31, Annex 36, and Annex uh, 46. He also leads the module three of the German Energy project. So, uh, Simon, please, uh, I will ask you for a ten minutes talk. So the audience is yours. Thank you for the introduction. Um, I'm talking about one of the products, or maybe the main uh, main product, um, bringing all together from the task fifty the lighting retrofit advisor. Um, we heard about the structure already of that um, working group or that um, task by Jan. Um, and the lighting retrofit advisor had its role as collecting the results from all subtasks, bringing them together, and also presenting them in a way that it's linked together uh, brought together there at a central place. So all the subtasks were feeding into the lighting retrofit advisor, or better saying, the lighting retrofit advisor is presenting results and um, experiences from all the subtasks. So um, usually you do that in a website um, to do all the to have all the outcomes combined. Uh, the tools databases, but also the paperwork, reports, publications. Um, the new thing we had, and I will talk about that, is that we tried to prepare for different target groups. But then we were thinking, um, is that really up to date, or is a website, of course you have to have a website, but is that still the best way to do it? And we just looked a bit around and find, found out that um, the smartphone is a very, very very prominent place in our daily lives. People even thinking weird of people not looking at smartphones on train stations. So that's why we thought um, let's use that and try to make an app as our main dissemination um, way of dissemination. It's of course still additionally available on a website, but um, we tried to bring it all into apps and use that as a vehicle to transport our project results. So that's how the website looks, um, but it also is there as an app for Android, for Apple, and for um, Windows Phone. And you can already see they're slightly different always in the layout of the certain device. So the people are used to their own device can use the app and the, the program in a way they used to operate them. So um, I'm showing some screens, screenshots of the website. It's just easier to to show. Um, it presents the same way itself. It presents itself 
the same way on the, those apps. That's the main starting um, screen and you can already see that there are two light switches. One says start advisor, direct, direct component access is the other one. And that's um, our idea to present it um, for different target groups because not all target groups, and that's what, what um, especially Subtask A found out, is used and can consume all information at the same level of detail and they need their information structured differently. And that's why we have those that entrance as an advisor um, only showing tools for the certain um, target groups um, and also um, highlighting the steps they would go um, in the process of retrofit retrofitting. But of course um, you can also directly access all the components, the more classic way. You can see that there are several components existing in that ret lighting retrofit advisor. Um, yeah, and you can still switch from the adv advisor structure or entrance to the classic um, entrance all the time and use the tools as as you need it. So the different target groups we have been looking at is designer consul consultants, industry, installers, tenants, owner, investors, but also policy maker and authorities. And with that picture I think it's quite clear that some are looking for calculation tools, some only for um, um, retrofit cases, example building and others probably more or just for different technologies that are available. So we try to um, present the information that in there is in there for suitable for those target groups. So that's how that looks like. That's one of those pages. You can see the different topics interested that are interested for that target group. But we also um, try to bring in a lot of pictures explaining what we want to say as um, also specifically on smartphones you just have a different way of consuming and reading information. So we always try to link pictures in and not have a lot of text but rather bring um, images, graphics into the picture table chart where you can easily access the information more um, graphical than just one a text base. The different components here, um, there are quite a few. We have the more or less informational components, the low hanging fruit, technology viewer, information on case studies, what has been done in the different countries, a section about FAQs and recommendations, the collection of tools, which is also um, of subtask C, just a collection which tools are available on the market with a short description. A list of metrics you would want to look at if you're planning or doing a lighting retrofit. Of course, all the publication and reports out of the, that task in a central place and also the information on that survey that was that had been done in that project to get an idea of what the people are actually looking for when they're thinking about lighting retrofits. But that's not all, that's the information and you have to be informed to do a good uh, retrofit but you also need some numbers and that's the second part, the calculation and rating components. We have a benchmarking dealing uh, where you just get an idea about the installed lighting power, density and um, energy consumption for lighting. We can just rank that and see if you rather you rather have high or low consumption. You can look at uh, several buildings with the same information at the portfolio analysis. You can like if you are a property manager for several buildings, you can enter them here and see how your portfolio of building is performing. Then when we're already mobile in an app, then we can also use that app to calculate. The on-site optimizer is intended to be used in a building. You just go into that building um, and um, look at the building, look at the properties it has, the lighting system. You can directly um, select the options there and it uh, offers you several 
optimization or retrofit concept. And then the CFS Express, CFS stands for complex fenestration systems, where you have an hourly calculation of the lighting, uh, uh, daylight availability in a building, and it can also um, look at several or different um, strategies for electrical lighting, um, and can also see what the benefit of daylight, the use of daylight in a building actually is. So coming straight to that, several components, that's the low-hanging fruit. We already saw that um, chart in Jan's presentation. We just uh, looked at a um, conventional installation, but then also what happens if you go for state-of-the-art, in that terms, LED um, um, installation, what are the benefits? Do you have a break-even part or payback time point? You can also look at reference installation and typical new generation installation that you just see how your, actual, your building might look like and what new solutions might look like. Martino already told about the technology viewer. Um, you can um, look at all the technologies that have been evaluated here. Um, you can look at daylighting, electric lighting, but also the building interior. Um, you can sort and rank them for either the um, lighting comfort or the heat um, topic there, um, and then get an idea of the technologies for the different sections. If you click on one technology, again, there's text and uh, images and pictures combined. <clears throat> We have, again, the evaluation in terms of energy efficiency, lighting quality, thermal benefits, and operational costs, but also, as bullet points, the highlights, just to give the good and bad of that technology in a brief sentence that you easily get an idea about what that is about. Um, if you want to read into it, you can read about the performance um, of the technology, but also look at the images and pictures and see how that technology actually looks like. If they have been used um, or what has been done in lighting retrofit can be seen at the case study viewer. We have case studies from all over the world, um, mainly from Europe, but also from Brazil, China, and Japan, um, and for different types of buildings. And you can either click on one of those bullet points or select it from the list there. If you click on a building, then you see the same structure for all case studies. They also can um, compare those case studies. Um, again, we try to reduce the amount of text that you're reading. Um, if you're using on a smartphone, you're not usually used to read so much, but um, rather have the most important information in bullet points. And if you're in, um, interested more, you can read the text. Again, the pictures that are in there or charts or um, graphics for evaluation can be also clicked on and they um, pop up in a, in a window so you, you can look properly at them. That is the benchmarking tool. You can um, decide if you want to look at a building or a stone in that building. Um, you look at the type of building and the floor area. Then you can um, enter the installed power. Um, and the electricity consumption, either as absolute or related to floor area values, and it just rates your consumption to a national benchmark, a national survey, where you can see that in that case, um, the lighting, the installed power is rather on a on lower end, but the uh, lighting electricity consumption rather is on a higher end. So um, you would think well, you could um, take out of that that you want to do something about your lighting electricity cons electricity consumption. Um, that is the FAQ section. We um, collected the um, frequently asked questions, as the name already says. Um, if you click on a question, it shows you some possible solution or answers for that question. That is so far the informational com components. I didn't go into all of them um, due to time constraints, but um, you might want to look at it anyways and see and find out yourself.
The second part, the calculation tools, I'm looking into that um, first thing, the CSS um, Express. It is an implementation of the so-called three-phase method, where we also use pre-calculated um, matrices and um, combine them, and therefore can um, calculate the daily um, availability from of, of daylight in the room and can link that to electrical consumption depending on different um, strategies if you're manual switch or if you have a daylight dependent control of an electric lighting system. Um, as it has predefined values, um, you're not that flexible with the room geometry and the uh, um, sizes and dimensions of the room, but still you can here um, uh, look at different options of your room if you have an obstruction, the window wall ratio, um, the glass and shading, there are several systems um, behind there. And then after small calculation, um, depending on the power of your smartphone device or your computer, it will take several seconds, um, some seconds to several seconds, and you get that um, um, annual profile of the daily use um, or the daily availability. Um, in that case, the illuminance is in the room with a um, reference point near and far away from the window. The energy charts, which I don't have a screenshot here, would then um, show the energy consumption for that specific room for the different control strategy of the electric lighting system. But that's not all. Um, as you are in that building, you really want to use that tool um, to see um, what possible retrofit solutions or strategies you can have. Um, therefore, the energy on-site optimizer lets you um, determine the building as is, um, calculates the energy demand and the installed lighting power there and then offers you automatically different retrofit strategies showing you on-site already um, the energy consumption before and after, but also economical values like payback times or annual operation or operational costs and so on. Here in that case, we used that and found out that um, we can easily reduce the um, lighting um, and lighting demand by uh, quite, quite an amount. That's how it looks. Um, on the left hand side you have a menu where you can either go to the project settings or your zones or look that directly at, res at results. In the middle area you have um, an area where you can enter or change some parameters. On the right hand side it's either on-site help or even the results. It shows you in that um, on that area, the energy demand before and with a certain retrofit concept that you selected as your interest, either in, um, best economical values or, en or lowest energy consumption, and it shows you the reduction of the energy demand with the options um, it, it suggested. In the middle area, you can see those areas where you, what you can change or what you can actually choose on-site. Um, the zone properties, the zone uh, user profile, the floor area, but also the room properties like the room index, room reflectances, the lighting concept, and so on. It looks like that. For instance, the light, light mountain type. Um, you have recessed lighting, surface lighting, pendant lighting, standing light, workspace light, and so on. You just select your option. It actually calculates the energy demand also on-site, instantly um, suggests um, retrofit concept, and shows the result on the right-hand side. You would click on that Next and Back button just to go through each step of the um, inspection of the building. And then it offers you several concepts, um, and they are then in, um, also shown here. Um, it can really be used on site to get an idea what can be done and what potentials retrofit concepts have. 
So um, how do you get it? Um, it's um, available on the um, as a website uh, um, as we will be um, www.lightingretrofitadvisor.com, but already um, uh, available on the Android Play Store. Unfortunately, that uh, bad just right over the um, link here. It's found under the name Lighting Retrofit Advisor. It can be installed there. We are still are busy, uh, busy um, bringing it into the Apple Store and the Windows Store. It's available right now in, with an English and German language, and we're planning to have it as also as in, in French, in Portuguese, and in Chinese language. So that's it from my side for a brief introduction into the Lighting Retrofit Advisor. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Simon, for your nice and interesting presentation of uh, what is, I think, uh, the best outcomes uh, that we can do nowadays. It's a software tool available and free for everyone. I can see there are some questions uh, for several questions dealing with, uh, okay, uh, energy efficiency techniques and so on, but what I, I would like to take the, the lead at this moment and ask you that uh, where will be lighting retrofit advisor in, let's say, 15 years? On all our smartphones at least. Um, now, I mean, it will be continuously maintained. Um, I think with the uh, first approach of using that technology on smartphones, and I think we will continue developing it and maintaining it. Okay, thank you, Simon. And uh, okay, I have. Uh, the seen some asking from some role for zero energy buildings and so on. But I think for me that it's time to summarize, to say uh, thank you to all the speakers of this uh, webinar of the Solar, Solar Heating and Cooling Academy. Uh, so thank you, John. Well, thank you, Martin, and thank you, Simon, for your really good presentations. Uh, thank you, Joshua, Joanna, and Isis for hosting this uh, joint seminar, webinar, and uh, thank you, all the audience. So, uh, I think I will leave my moderator role and give the word back to Joanna. Thanks so much, Ricardo, for your very kind words and for moderating this really excellent presentation. Uh, I really enjoyed it. I, I hope all of our audience did as well. I can see by the number of questions and comments coming in that um, it is a hot topic and there's a lot more discussion to be had. Um, thank you to our panelist speakers for sharing your knowledge and expertise with us today. And thank you especially for the to the Solar Academy. The next Solar Academy webinar is already in the pipeline. It is scheduled um, to be to take place in June, so I hope that you can all tune into that one as well. That will be on solar heat for industrial processes and takes place on the 28th of June of this year, so mark your calendars. Uh, we will also be sending you invitations and reminders to attend that event. To contact the panelist speakers individually for further information about the, the information that they presented here or the links to, their, to the app that was mentioned or the reports, please have a look or download their presentations from the ISIS website. You should have the link available to you. And uh, I just want to give you some information about the next ISIS webinar and that will be taking place next month on the 26th of April and we'll focus on a, a different topic and that is renewable energy disruption in the Australian electricity industry. So also a very exciting topic 
please have a look at the website iscs.org for more information. If you use social media, we really do encourage you to connect with us to continue the discussion and continue to stay tuned to what's happening in this field and other fields in renewable energy. Last but not least, thank you to the audience for joining us today, for being so interactive and dynamic, sending your questions and your comments, and we really do look forward to welcoming you at our next Solar Academy webinar or the next ISIS webinar. You may view the recording in a couple of hours, let me just get the slide, there it is, on the ISIS website and also on the Solar Academy website and the YouTube channels. If you have comments or feedback, we welcome you to share this with us so that we can continue to improve our webinar service for you. Please participate in the survey or send your feedback to public.relations at isis.org. And that's it, we are right on time. I wish you all a wonderful uh, rest of the day or start of the day, whatever time it is in your part of the world. Bye-bye.